chamber team kind of spread out um, so it's awesome we have a great diverse cross-section of Tom Ball here with us tonight so as Mayor Quinn said I'm Jessica Rogers I'm the assistant city manager I actually don't get to take any credit for tonight um, I want our wonderful community development staff um, to raise their hands they're in the back there yes they are absolutely incredible and so if 
if you have a question tonight, ask them. Um, and with that, I'm going to introduce Alexis. Alexis is with Friesen Nichols. Friesen Nichols is the consultant that we've brought on board to help us go through this very comprehensive process. Um, what you'll see here tonight is just one night we'll get your feedback, but this is a long process. This process started in 2023 and we'll go throughout this year. So we want your feedback. We'll continue to keep you updated um, as we make progress through this. Um, and Alexis is gonna walk you through how tonight's gonna go and what feedback we're looking for. But if you need anything, flag one of us down and we're happy to help. Thanks for being here. Good evening, everyone. Appreciate all of your time and attention being here to be a part of the comprehensive plan process. Honestly, the mayor already explained everything so we can go home tonight. <laughs> but thank you again for being here. We're here for a comprehensive plan update. Um, what tonight, the purpose of tonight is to get input from you all and to understand what the needs and desires are of the community. My name is Alexis Garcia and I'm serving as the project manager for this uh, project. We are Friesen Nichols. We are a multidisciplinary engineering firm with an urban planning team. Um, I'm joined here with Shivangi Rathor and Shad Como as part of the Friesen Nichols team. Up here on the screen you can see the team that's working on this, working closely with city staff and the community to develop this comprehensive plan update. I want to start by just giving a little bit of an overview of what are, what are we here for tonight. So a comprehensive plan is a long range vision. This is not today or tomorrow. This is looking at the 10, 20 year horizon. Beyond that, you're looking at a document that's gonna guide growth, development, and policy decisions going into the future. And so really what this is going to do is end up influencing your zoning regulations, subdivision regulations, decisions made by city council and planning and zoning, and all of these things that really go into developing the community. So this is an update. We did go through this process pre previously in 2019, so you do currently have a comprehensive plan and you can view that on the project website. A comprehensive plan should be updated every five to 10 years just to make sure that you're on mark. Over time, things evolve, things change, there's more growth, development, unexpected things happen. So you always wanna check in and see, are we still on mark? Are we still going towards that long range vision that we had decided in 2019? And so that's what we're doing here through this process. This, through this process, we will be focusing on updating the demographics, the land use, um, looking at downtown and identifying if there's any other specific items that need to be updated in relation to that. We'll also be taking a look at housing and neighborhoods, economic development, and arguably most importantly, the implementation plan to identify what recommendations have already been completed and what still has yet to be done. Um, what you're gonna find out of this is gonna be a guide of development, um, a number of capital improvements that might be your streets, it might be infrastructure, and then also creating opportunities for civic engagement, what we're doing here tonight. Looking at, ask, talking to the community, asking what you all want. This isn't our plan, it's not the city's plan, it's your plan, the people who live here and grow and develop. Uh, one thing I just wanna note is sometimes uh, people don't always understand the difference between future land use and zoning. And the future land use plan is that long range uh, vision that influences things like zoning regulations. And so on this chart here, you can kind of see a little bit of a difference between what's your future land use map versus the zoning map. And your future land use map is looking at that 30,000 foot view, guiding where those land uses should be, and then identifying maybe what those zoning regulations should be or what kind of character should be in different areas. Um, when you're looking at your zoning regulation, this is an ordinance, this is a regulation, and it's very specific. And so really what you're looking at through this process is identifying what do you want to see in different areas, and then this can influence things like the zoning regulations moving forward. And so we always want to make sure we have an understanding of this key difference between these two different maps. While they do look similar and you're gonna see colors on them, these are two different processes, but it's very important that we go through the long range, high level comprehensive plan to then work on the zoning regulations. <clears throat> and I also wanna talk a little bit about what the roles and responsibilities are through this process. Like we mentioned, we have city staff. Um, I myself is part of the consulting team with Reason Nichols, but really what is everybody's role in this? So when you're going through this process and with the comprehensive plan, you have your city council, they're the ones really leading the guiding principles and the policy decisions in the community. Um, you have your planning and zoning commission. They're responsible for regulating uh, the zoning regulations, um, making decisions for zoning changes and development decisions. 
and especially those giving recommendations to city council based on the comprehensive plan. Um, and then we have our focus group, and this, uh, this body is acting as our advisory committee made up of members of the community, uh, residents, business owners, stakeholders, who are helping us as the consulting team and city staff to identify what those needs are of the community and making sure that we're moving in the right direction. And then we have the community, you all here tonight, participating in uh, community events, participating in the online survey, and making sure that you're giving us feedback so that we are making the right decisions. For this comprehensive plan, we have these plan elements. This is what you can expect to see in the plan. Uh, we have our community snapshot. It's a little hard to see at the top, but this is just identifying what are those existing conditions? Because you want to start with what are the existing conditions that have changed since 2019 to understand where we're moving forward? Then we have, we'll make updates to the land use plan, uh, looking at transportation and mobility options. We'll do a little bit of an assessment on downtown. Um, we also have an economic development consultant that's helping us with identifying the market realities within Tomball and what's possible. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an assessment on the housing and neighborhoods, and like I said before, the implementation plan. And so what we'll be doing is updating the existing implementation plan to identify what's been done and what really needs to happen next to make sure we're moving on. Um, in terms of the schedule, here's what you can expect for this process. Uh, we kicked this off last summer, looking at the background analysis, uh, looking at the vision and guiding principles, community snapshot, like I mentioned. Um, here, November, ooh, excuse me, uh, November to May of 2024, we'll be looking at developing the plan and those elements, really drafting those elements and updating those pieces from the existing plan. Um, then around June in the summer, we'll start looking at the implementation plan um, and identifying what that work plan is and what updates need to be made. And we're aiming for adoption here in August of 2024. So in terms of the process, that's what you can expect. Um, I also want to give you all a little taste of the community snapshot. Because like, uh, when we're looking at this, we just want to understand where are we today and where are we moving on in the future. Um, we also want to look at some of the previous planning efforts that have occurred since 2019. Uh, there was a 20, there's a local center study for downtown in 2009, and we really want to look at this and see what that plan recommended for downtown that's already been so beautifully implemented. Uh, there was a strategic plan done for 2011 to 2016, the previous comprehensive plan, and then. There is also an active Parks and Recreation's trail system master plan that's in the drafting process as we speak, and there was recently water and wastewater master plan. So we don't want to ignore these other planning efforts and make sure that they're incorporated in the recommendations that we're making for this plan. We also want to look at the growth that's been happening, and so this is just a little snapshot of what the demographics are and what those changes are. You can see the growth over time. Uh, this is as of the 2019 census that was recently updated in December of 2023. And so we'll need to update these numbers here once those get finalized. Um, but you can see the steady growth in the community. And so identifying what are those needs and where should we, how much should we be anticipating growth going into the future? Um, looking at the racial distribution, understanding who's living in the community, what that age is, um, are we a younger community? Are we an older community? Who do we need to plan for in the future? Also looking at things like median in, uh, household income, you can see here that Tom Paul is pretty on par with the state of Texas and Harris County. Uh, looking at educational attainment, who are we planning for? And I know that some of these slides are a little difficult to see in the room, but this is also gonna be available on the project website following the meeting. Uh, also looking at commute times, like I said, we're going to be looking at transportation and mobility. Uh, how are people getting around the community? How can we change that? What do we need to be considering after understanding what are the existing conditions and where are we moving from there? Um, I mentioned a couple times the future land use map, and this is arguably, arguably the, one of the biggest pieces of a comprehensive planning process because it really is identifying those land uses and where they should be located. Um, and so we take a look at the current feature land use map. Uh, you can see here, this is the Old Town area in brown. You can, uh, normally uh, your residential development is in yellow, your industrial development is shown in purple, and your commercial development's in red. And so where are those development patterns? Where should there be a change in land use? Do we need more medium density housing, more single family housing? And those are some of the questions we're asking you tonight and on the online survey. What should we be considering? Uh, we don't want to be looking at something that you all don't want to see. If you want to see more single family housing, 
we should look at where should that go? How can we support those needs in the community? And then the other thing we'll be looking at is the thoroughfare plan, which land use and thoroughfare plans and roadway networks go hand in hand. You can't just have land use, but also how do you get there? So we'll also be taking a look at the land use, the land use map and how that relates to the thoroughfare plan. Do any adjustments need to be made to the functional classifications? Do any adjustments need to be made to the thoroughfare plan? And just understanding how those land uses relate with the thoroughfare plan. And then lastly, we have the vision. And so during the 2019 process, there was a community vision established. And what this vision does is it gives you that high level arching view of where do we want to be as Tomball in the future. From there, there's a number of guiding principles and goals that were established that really envelop those elements of that comprehensive plan. And then that leads us to our policies, actions, and capital pro improvement projects that will be resulting in recommendations in this plan. And so uh, here tonight, we do have a question in the room asking, are we on the, on the right mark? This plan was developed during the community process in 2019. Is this, comprehensive, is this vision still the vision today? Do we need to make any adjustments for the next 10, 20 years going on? And so taking a look at this vision and seeing, is this still the vision for a town hall or should we make any small adjustments to it to make sure that we're on mark? Um, in terms of next steps, so this is just a snapshot of our process that we're going through, um, letting you all know what to expect over the coming months. Um, but in terms of next steps, we will be collecting input from you all here tonight from the online survey. Uh, we have a number of stakeholder interviews that we're going through as well during this process. Um, we're updating the existing conditions chapter to understand what those updates and elements are. And then um, we'll be moving on to our other pieces with the future land use, the transportation, mobility, and housing. Um, I encourage you all to stay up to date on this process at the project website at tomballtx.gov slash Tomball Comp Plan Update. There is a QR code on the agendas as well as probably all over social media and a, a link directly on the front of the homepage. So we encourage you to stay up to date. We'll have copies of the focus group meetings, um, presentations. Uh, 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 summer meeting summaries. We'll have a meeting summary of this event, understanding what the <coughs> feedback that we received, and we'll also put up drafts of the plan when those are prepared. And so you can always come to this website to stay up to date on the process. Uh, we also highly encourage you to take part in the online survey. We will be closing that survey at 11.59 on February 4th. So if you wait till Monday morning, we won't be able to take your feedback. Um, but it's open tonight. There's a QR code on your agendas, um, on the flyers that you can use to take it on your phone. We also have a survey station here tonight that you can take it here before you leave and you have the peace of mind of knowing that it's already done. And then lastly, participate tonight. We have a number of input boards. We've had great input so far. I'm excited to go read the comments. But feel free to peruse the boards, give us your input, let us know what you want to see in the future, what we need to change, and you can also talk with a member of staff. Um, I myself and other members of the consulting team are here. We can help you with any questions, or if you just want to let us know, we can always write down your ideas. We have comment cards that you can give feedback. We have a number of sticky notes to write comments on, but really we're here to listen, uh, here to take in the input and make sure that this truly is a community-driven plan. And so with that, I really, that's all I have. I thank you all for attending this evening. Um, if you have any questions, my name is Alexis Garcia. I also have Shad Como and Sh uh, Shubi Rathor. Uh, we'll be happy to take any comments and just encourage you all to participate tonight. Thank you very much.